On a day already dim in history some 40 years ago, proud Carnarvon received once more its promised English prince, Prince Edward. But it was the repetition of a scene enacted six centuries before. For it is Britain's special wonder that behind her pageantry there lies historic fact. And in the pattern of our island story, no strands glow more brightly than those that stretch from the land of Wales that lies towards the west. And then, in coronation year, that same old castle saw a queen within its ramparts. A queen who, in her being, symbolizes the unity of many talents, the Anglo-Saxon and the Celt. Thus, by the subtle mixture that is Britain, she is Queen of England, yet Queen of Wales. Everywhere she looks, she sees the rugged memories of a tremendous past. And Wales is indeed a land whose qualities are fit for a queen to look upon. A land diverse within itself. Up in the north, the lonely hill farmers tend their sheep. And living always near to ancient mountains, the legends of their forebears are ever present in their hearts. An Englishman it was, the poet Matthew Arnold, who said of Wales, she is a land where the past still lives, where every place has its tradition, every name its poetry, and where the people still know this past, this poetry, and live with it and cling to it. He spoke too of the wild flowers, the bubbling springs and the forest solitude. In many parts today, the forest solitude is often broken by hard economic fact. For Wales is a land whose natural resources need husbanding, and forest glades are also future wealth. but it gets there, and there seems to be some urgency. Ah, yes, a customer, and a very special one, too. For not always in these prosaic days does one see a young lady in such colorful regalia. And certainly it's rare to see an engine driver dismount to act as porter. But a harp in Wales is precious, only equaled by the importance of rehearsal. So let's get her there. But in Wales, music and poetry are not confined to groves and hills. It's virile stuff that in the south comes surging up from sweat and darkness down below. Self-expression is essential to the Welsh, and fortunately they are not without the means of finding it. For when as a nation they sing of what they have to give, often it happens that not only Wales, but the outside world will pay the compliment of listening. One voice that comes from Wales has truly sung its way across all frontiers. That is the voice of youth. And at its call of recent years, the answering voices of youth from many countries have been heard in this ancient land.
for it's Clangotland in the summertime. And there the visitor will see a sight unique in the Western world, and yet a sight that is the essence of its civilization. The International Eisteddfod. The young from many countries gathered together for song and dance in friendly competition, expressing proudly the best that lies within their separate nations, yet anxious that the world may see and hear it. Here, for a moment, is nationalism blended in unity. For poetry and dance and song are age-old things in every nation, at their loveliest when given new freshness by the young. And Wales is happy that such events should happen within her confines. Let us do what most visitors to Wales insist on doing. Take the little mountain railway that chugs its way towards the summit of Snowdon. The mountains of Wales are grand and sombre in their beauty, not as large as those in Switzerland, as even a Welshman will admit. Not only the Welsh, but all who've seen them will say there's a quality, a something that makes the rugged splendour of North Wales unique. Snowdon stands aloof. Isolated in her pride, burdened with memories. For from her heights she can survey the slopes of all her sisters, look down and remember scenes of blood and warfare. Romans, Normans, and breathe it quietly, even the English, each in turn, all came to Wales's mountains. But no one ever truly tamed these wild and lonely heights. The spirit roamed as free as the birds that flock around the islands off the coast of Wales. Grassholm, Skoma, Skokholm. 
To use a phrase of Wales's Dylan Thomas, where the gulls go to be lonely. Here is sanctuary for flight of bird or flight of fancy, for grace and movement and aspiration light as air. And those who know their Wales would grant that there indeed such things as freedom, aspiration, and imagination's grace are closely guarded, be it for birds or for the qualities that move the human spirit. Mountains, sea, and quiet fields, all things more worldly, if Mr. Hope will forgive the epithet. Now, Mr. Hope could not have come to Wales for singing, shades of Mr. Crosby, but he knows good golf, and at the Royal Links at Porth Call, he knows he'll find just that. golf or bad golf, at least where there's hope, there's life, and the crowd enjoy it. For Wales is not backward in providing for the tourist, and for those who want the comfort of convention, the coastal towns along the North Shores provide it. Memories will linger when one has been to Wales. Come history, invaders, hard times or good, and Wales has seen them all. Nothing has quenched its charm or spirit, and nothing stopped its singing. Mm -hmm. 